Um, so Chris Kenyon, I, I work about 300 meters from here. So when Matt gave me a call about an hour ago and said, would you come along? I said, no, no problem. Um, so Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu. There's about 700 of us globally and about 450 of us are focused on making Ubuntu work for uh, customers in the cloud. So the, the sort of server cloud container part of the business. So it's, it's the major part of the Ubuntu story. Some of you may be using Ubuntu at home on desktops, but that's you know, actually where the, the money's made is we're supporting people like Dropbox, um, Heroku, and then more traditional companies like Sky, um, Deutsche Telekom over here as they adopt new platforms. All the time. <laughs> um, before I jump into Lexi, I, I, I thought I'd just give you a, a bit of color. So I, I am on the business development um, and sales side at Canonical, but I'll give you a bit of color as to how we've got into containers generally at Canonical. So, it, and it's a, a story that most of you probably won't know. Back in 2008, 2009, we were approached by Arm up in Cambridge, and um, Tudor Brown, who's the chairman at the time of Arm, said, look, eventually Moore's law is going to catch up with Moore's company, and Arm processors are going to make their way into the server. And can you start working with us to, you know, by the time we're ready for the server, we think Ubuntu will be everywhere. Can we start working, this is sort of seven, eight years ago, can we start working on making sure that Ubuntu was going to work on Arm processors? And it became very clear looking at Cortex-A9 and Cortex-A15 that there wasn't support for KVM. And uh, we w had always been interested in, in containers and looked at, you know, looked at what was happening in Solaris, a grown-up operating system, scene zones, and said, this is really interesting. And the idea came up very early to say, let's invest in containers on Linux. And we became the upstream maintainer for, um, for LXC. And... Um, if you fast forward a, a few years forward, obviously um, big Ubuntu users on AWS, people like Heroku, uh, w started looking at LXC and everything's based on containers. And obviously Docker itself was very much, okay, we're using LXC, we constantly need to move images across from one place. Rather than moving a whole image with an application, can we not just take a slice of the operating system and the application and move it across? And then you know, from LXC, very much Docker is then, is then born. So what are we doing right now to help in the, the problem set that is fast moving around containers? Well, th there are sort of three things that stand out. One is, we certainly looked at some of the early work that CoreOS did and said, look, this is really interesting. A minimal operating system, a juice, just enough operating system is a really interesting idea. And transactional updating clearly has a role to play in the container space. Um, we had been working on updating Ubuntu phones and think, you know, rethinking through packaging in Ubuntu um, for IoT and for phones. And it turns out that all the work that we've been doing on the Ubuntu phone, which was transactional updating, you know, when you, you have one version of the OS and you say, I want to go to this version and you just do a diff, you move forward and if the whole thing can upgrade perfectly, then great. And if it doesn't, it falls back. Um, that transactional updating mechanism um, from the phone turned out to be a perfect way of thinking about transactional updating in a container space as well. And so if you want to use transactional updating on Ubuntu, we have a special image of Ubuntu called Ubuntu Snappy, and it gives you two things. It gives you that minimal footprint of an image. It's, uh, I believe, under 280 meg. And um, it also gives you transactional updating. So as you're doing upgrades on thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of containers, you can say, I want to roll 10% of my infrastructure up to a new version, and you don't get into any form of package hell um, um, or, or contention. You either have a successful upgrade or you don't. And it, it may be, in so many ways, it's not, it, it shouldn't be surprising that that comes from the phone world, because in fact, a lot of, I saw a great blog post a few months ago saying everything that's interesting in the data center right now comes from phones. You know, we've got the ARM processor coming into the data center, and the same problem set, how do I update 10 million phones, is now the problem set of the data center. How do I update a million containers? Um, and so a lot of the things that we've learned from an IoT or more devices-centric world turn, about to turn out to be really applicable on the data center side. So the first thing is Ubuntu snappy images, really, really tight, transactionally updated. Um, Docker, we love. So be really clear, we're great fans of Docker. There's probably, if you go to the Docker website, there's probably seven times more Docker based on Ubuntu than the next operating system. And we do a ton of stuff um, with the Docker team to make sure that Ubuntu continues to be a great platform to build um, Docker on. Um, 
And the third thing just to call out is if, you know, if, if setting up Kubernetes is a goal, you know, you're saying this is really interesting, you want to get going with Kubernetes or some of the other platforms around Docker, um, if you use Juju, which is a, a, a modeling platform that we have, you can literally, with, with one click, deploy Kubernetes onto AWS or onto OpenStack. Um, and so, again, Juju deploy Kubernetes is a, a super simple way of getting Kubernetes itself set up so you can start experimenting with it. So that's a little bit about generic containers. So on top of our investment on LXC, we came up with a project called LexD. So it's not LXD, it's LexD. Anyone here heard of LexD? A couple of people. Anyone playing, actively played with it at all? I thought I'd take five minutes just to run through an update about what we're doing with LexD. So we call it the light advisor. Because in a sense, what's really interesting about LexD is to try and give the manageability of a virtual machine and give you the density of a container. So we, we talk about it as a light advisor. And it's a full Linux operating system. We're focused on giving you, you know, bare metal performance, high density, with and removing as much overhead as possible. So trying to get rid of a traditional hypervisor, but still give you the manageability you'd expect from a hypervisor. What does that actually look like? So we differentiate enormously in the canonical view of the world between process containers and full machine containers. Okay? And we think that both have a role. So process containers are super exciting, and, and we love Docker. But if you look at traditional enterprises, there's a whole set of problems that me efficiently sending you a file on Docker introduces, some of which are going to be solved just from a, a, um, at a technical level, but some of which are fundamentally a problem, which is if you're not in a truly DevOps environment, um, it may be that you as an administrator want to apply patches to something. And in a world where you can only take that process container image, you're only running exactly what the developer gave you, actually there are lots of operational issues that um, process containers throw up that we think may be solved another way. So in a, in a machine container, as well as the app itself, you get init, cron, syslog, a lot of the stuff you'd expect to see in a, in a traditional virtual machine. And in fact, you could run Docker in a full machine container. There's no, there's, there are reasons to do that, some reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. But in itself, there's no reason why you can't run a process container in a full machine container. But the advantage there is you've got much, many more of the traditional management paradigms for operate, uh, sysadmins, anyone operating uh, large infrastructure are there and they can be used. Um, so nothing stopping you again running Docker apps in, in a LexD container. And so LexD is just, it's, it's a Linux, it's a daemon that is talking to the Linux container itself. Okay. Two things we're focused on delivering with LexD. One is live migration. So we've done demos where you can be playing Doom on one machine and we can live migrate that container across. So that's the sort of thing you'd expect of a more VMware type infrastructure. Um, and um, on the security side, lots of the problems that the Alex from Red Hat was talking about, also addressing them. Um, we use AppArmor rather than SE Linux, um, just because we find it it's more human friendly. So at a security level, they're both delivering pretty much the same thing. But we traditionally, unless you're in the NSA, we find that people use AppArmor um, correctly, and therefore, from a security perspective, it's better implemented. Um, and then we, we're focused on these two problems. Now you can say, well, what about storage and, and networking? And it turns out there's a pretty big open source project out there that deals quite neatly with the problems of, of networking and storage, which is OpenStack itself. And so um, the other project that, that we announced recently was NCLXD, which is a, uh, a complete swap out of um, libvirt and KVM drivers within OpenStack. And you can now use um, LexD. Um, and, and in 15.04, which is a release in April of, op of Ubuntu Open, of Ubuntu, um, and Ubuntu OpenStack, there's a beta of that. So you can actually now deploy OpenStack entirely on containers. And we've already got, you know, we've got customers who've got use cases where that's absolutely the right thing to do for OpenStack. Um, and that will make its way into Ubuntu 16.04. So we're just coming up to the October release, but next year um, in 2016 in April, there's the LTS release 16.04, and there you'll have full container support, LexD, um, with OpenStack um, in a, a GA that we're happy to stand behind with, uh, with customers. Um, 
how am I doing on time? We're fine. So a couple of other sort of, I, I'm trying to think how much detail I want to go on here. So 15 to 4, so very much, um, th this is the, the core thing about LexD is it delivers you unprivileged containers. So, so if you do have a security issue and a container breaks out, there, nothing there is running as root. And that's the problem set that we think is really important to address on the container side. Some of it can be done with CNAME and, and um, AppArmor that we talked about earlier. Some of it's going to be resolved in silicon. So there's work that both Intel, AMD, and ARM are doing to limit what has access to different parts of memory. And we believe that that will come together quite neatly next year. So the latest Intel processors will, um, with LexD will, will give you um, a, very n a very nice security story, whether or not it's really good enough to run without using a VM in a multi-tenant cloud, different story, but, um, but it's looking very promising. Um, just a couple of uh, thoughts about what, what does that mean if you, if you can use a lighter visor in traditional infrastructure. I think most of you are here because you understand fundamentally the difference between containers and KVM. But uh, there's a couple of benchmarks that were worth calling out that we, we shared um, recently in Vancouver. Um, we took a single Intel server and said, like, how much KVM can I get running on this versus using LexD? You know, what's the density advantage? Um, Startup time for a single image. You know, again, containers, as you know, will simply beat KVM every time. What's interesting in this particular benchmark is that when you spun up the full server to over 500 LexD guests versus 37 KVM guests, we actually got to the 530 um, LexD guests 20% faster than we got to the maximum number of, um, of KVM instances on the machine. Um, and there are latency advantages, which we can go through from a benchmarking perspective. So, um, so LexD we find super interesting. I would encourage anyone looking at containers, especially if you're in a more traditional enterprise, to ask the question, are we really moving to a truly DevOps model? Like, for this, this application, this particular infrastructure, am I moving fully over to a DevOps model where the core app developers are going to be on call 24 by 7 um, from the team that are actually operating the infrastructure? Or is the truth that some of the apps that you're relying on are either coming from outside your trusted area, so they are, they are ISVs and third-party apps, and they're coming from outside a trusted set of, you know, very small core team, um, or are they just operational delays to getting updates to core images? And if you then need to do updates to those images, then LexD gives you a more traditional par paradigm for manageability um, over a process container approach. So both are valid, both will have a role over the next few years, but, but um, there will be pros and cons and a place for both. All right. Thank you very much for your time.